Hey guys, I'm here to review a Wickworks uh, chain ring and it's a 5334 and right now today I'm in the Bay Area. This is Almaden Lake in San Jose and it's a little bit hot. It's about uh, 88 right now. It's about a little over 31 degrees C. So a little toasty. Okay, so here's the bike and I'll review the chain ring and then I'll talk a little bit about the bike. So after the chain ring, chain ring review, uh, you could uh, stop the video. If you have any comments, I'll try and respond to the comments. If you have any questions about the chain ring, then I'll go into just overview on the bike. So it is a uh, like a 2011 Giant TCR Advanced SL. So it's an older bike. But here is the chain ring. And then what makes this chain ring unique? Well, I'll first say that uh, I'm not sponsored by Wickworks. I'm just doing a review. So a standard uh, a standard chain ring uh, for the front is a 53 tooth outer or larger ring, and then the inner ring is a 39. So the, that's what most of the pros are using generally, unless they go to a custom uh, chain ring setup. And then the pros are running the back cassette. They're running typically 1128. So their climbing uh, gear would be. The smaller ring which is a 3928 but a lot of us uh, just cyclists that might be a uh, hard uh, ratio gear ratio to climb on when you're on an eight eight percent grade or more so you could size down to a Pro Compact, which is a 52 outer ring and a 36 inner ring. Or you could even go smaller, which is a Compact, which is a 50 large ring and a 34 uh, smaller ring. So if you go to a Compact, you'll have a nice uh, climbing gear with a 3428. But when you're on a downhill and it's like I don't know, 7% grade or more, you'll be spun out with a 5011. You know, you hit about, from my experience, probably about 36, 37 miles an hour, and your cadence will be close to 100. So I was tired of getting spun out, so I looked into a 5334, but the... Uh, the big manufacturers like Shimano and SRAM, they don't make a 5334. The only one I found was a Wickworks. So I think most of the manufacturers do not make the 5334 because of the large jump between here, the chain line here, and this smaller uh, 34. If it's not machined correctly on the inside of this, when you drop the chain down to the 34 from the 53, the chain will drop, it'll drop off, and it'll drop into here. So you'll get chain drops a lot. And the way they engineered this uh, Wickworks uh, chain ring, it kind of facilitates that movement. Plus I got another uh, tip for you guys if you decide to go with this, uh, this setup is when you go to drop when you go to drop the chain from the 53 to the 34 if you could have your chain over on the smaller cogs it doesn't have to be the 11 but the smaller cogs so the chain is on this side over here and then when you go to drop it it's less likely to drop beyond uh, the 34 on the other side so and uh, also I'm sweating. When you go back up from the 34 to the 53, 
I like to have the chain also on this side so it provides a lot of slack and it's easier to move this derailleur from the 34 to the 53. So, and you might see that my cassette, it's not a 1128, it's a SRAM 1070 and it's a 1132. So my, my granny climbing gear, it's a 3432. So I'm an older guy and I love this combination because when you go on a long ride in the Bay Area, there is a lot of hills. If you go on a 50, 60 mile ride and with like 4,000 feet of climbing in it, towards the end there's a climb and you're kind of tired, this helps out a lot. A 34, 32 combination, oh man, it's a savior because you could spin at close to your cadence close to 80 on a climb compared to if you had a even a compact with a uh, 34, 28. I mean, if you're strong, if you're 55 years old, let's say, and you're a strong rider, yeah, you could do it. But for just an average ride, I ride probably three times a week. And I still can't sit down, go up at 8% grade with an 80 cadence with a 34.28. But I can with this. Yeah, you're going slow. But still, if you're bonked, this helps a lot. Now... This rear derailleur, I have this extension piece on it here. So you could buy them. Uh, there's different manufacturers that make it, like Wolf Tooth, I think, makes one. What it does is just this metal piece that extends your derailleur lower by a little bit. It used to connect right here, but now it connects, what, an inch, an inch lower? So that enables you to get this cog of the derailleur underneath the 32 tooth um, if you ride mountain bikes you'll see they have pretty big derailleurs and it's a big derailleur because mountain bikes they've gone to a one by system with one chain ring here and then this huge you know 46 48 50 tooth uh, cassette in the back and they they need clearance for this portion of the derailleur to get underneath the bottom of the cog so they have long cage derailleurs and if you have a typical derailleur on a road bike like this, this is a SRAM Force Group set, an old one, you could still you could still get it to clear this 32 with just adding this piece. Okay, so the bike, it's excuse me while I wipe this sweat away, is a kind of a sweltering 88 degrees here Fahrenheit. So I'm just getting done with a ride, about 23 miles, maybe a thousand feet of climbing. So I got a zip like it's a 120 or a 30, 130 millimeter stem. I got some Ritchie uh, carbon handlebars. I got an old Garmin uh, 500 uh, GPS unit. It's a SRAM Force group set. Cell Italia seat. I got some 50 millimeter uh, clincher uh, wheel set. I used to ride tubulars, like a 33 millimeter HED tubulars, but oh man, trying to fix a tubular if you got a flat it is just, it's a bear to fix on the road. So no more of that. I'm just riding clinchers for now. Uh, look pedals uh, Let me know if you guys got any comments or questions regarding the Wickworks uh, chain ring the 5334 Laters